Hi, we are continuing our latest trend with inviting other shop group members to our devlogs and today I'll be talking with Kamil Wojcik, another programmer. Hello there. <laughs> Hi Kamil. Uh, Kamil did one of the devlogs for Altusblad uh, on his own, right Kamil? Yeah, actually I did a, a video devlog on the movement and sensors before Kickstarter and later a regular devlog on the smell system, which is out of date right now. Yeah, so you can argue that Camille has more experience in this than I have. <laughs> so it should be. Uh, good I don't think. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. It should be just a nice conversation about cool stuff that we have in Elder's Blood, and today we'll be talking about the event system, and uh, so how we present yeah. the plot of the game and some other cool stuff. So Camille, what can you tell us about the events? Okay, so. Uh... The events are actually just a simple uh, data objects that hold information uh, about what should happen in the game. We have uh, four basic types, a regular event, NPC event, mission event, and a random event, which is actually a container for the, one of the previous types. But uh, the most in interesting part about the events is probably the editor, which you're showing right now. With, with the plot you want uh, in the game, which is uh, quite complex, we need a, a visual editor for it, right? Yeah, that is very important for me. So we tried a couple of uh, frameworks for it, for our node-based editor, and we found uh, Xnode that uh, works well for us. And I'd like to uh, use this opportunity to thank for Brickstead, uh, aka Six City on GitHub, uh, for developing, supporting uh, his work. It's an it's an awesome framework for making a, a node-based editor. Okay, so let's let's get to the details of the editor. Uh, so the the, ba the basic uh, function is to just create a uh, event of whatever type, yeah, and just fill it with data. So you have like a region where the event should ha happen, or uh, leave it empty for a, a anywhere basically. And we have uh, a place for rewards that you can uh, give to the player after the completion of this uh, event. Uh, a checkbox for whether this event should uh, show automatically when a player enters a region. Uh, we have uh, options for player responses for, uh, to the to this event. Yeah, and uh, we are using translation keys in all of those places. So all the events that already are here, you can see that uh, some weird, weird text because we we are going to translate the game. So we just use. A simple translation key that will be uh, changed later in the game. And the events also have uh, the option of connecting uh, with each other. So on the right side we have outgoing connections, uh, which are basically um, connections to this event. And on the left side we have the incoming connections, which basically determine what uh, the event should do with a connected completed event. Uh, so we have like uh, all required events to unlock. So this event, uh, the one that uh, all the events are connected to, will get unlocked when all of the events connected to the first uh, node there uh, are completed. Yeah, all uh, required events to unlock. Uh, so you can do a, a story where a, a player needs to do like three different things, and only after that a for example, the next chapter in the story unlocks. The uh, second thing is the restarting an event, uh, which is good for a conversation loops, where uh, a player can ask a thing and then go back to, to the conversation hub, where he can uh, ask uh, different questions. And we have a, a disable connection, which uh, basically disables the event, which means it can never be used. And in both those uh, restart and disable, uh, any completed event will trigger this uh, behavior. So that's basically uh, this editor. It's a relatively new uh, tool we have uh, in our game. Uh, there are some minor bugs and unimplemented features yet, but we're 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 working on it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very powerful tool actually. Mm, it's more powerful than I was thinking it will be. So I needed. Uh, some time to get used to this and my story that that, that I wrote for it was not really um, Adjusted, you know for the needs. So yeah, that that was, mm -hmm. that was something surprising, but uh, actually it uh, it turns out that it's 
more than I was expecting, so I think I should be happy with that. The, the editor wasn't re really uh, ready for your story as well. Yeah, we made some some changes along the way, like with the, <laughs> with the branching uh, conversations, uh, random events. Yeah, this, yeah. This, is, this is very cool, but especially uh, we have some problems with this because I was expecting to work uh, more like in Twine. In Twine, uh, I'm I'm planning this this story as you can see, and great thanks to the creator of Twine uh, for that. Uh, and it's it's way simpler <laughs> as you can imagine. <laughs> so you know, doing a, a branching uh, branching event, branching conversation, right? Mm, is here is very simple. You just you know you have uh, like this 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 arrows, and you know to go back, it's it's, it's very easy, but in our case, yeah. in the in this conversation <clears throat> in the game, something like that is not enough. You know, right now it's just like an alpha version of the story. So okay, let's let's with the, with that. But actually, this this should be like another event that will transport you after you will ask the question. Because you know, it's very strange right now when you are asking a question. Okay, the roof will tell you something, blah, blah, blah. You go back, but you're in the place when she was responding mm -hmm. to your previous yeah, like, yeah. like question. So it's, it's strange, like you're going back in time and she's just talking nonsense to you. <laughs> so yeah, I will have to rearrange the text, add some more of this like question, is there anything you want to know? Or are we done with this conversation? And you can ask something or just mm -hmm, move on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've learned a lot. Well, I was playing with this. Well, actually, you can uh, do a different uh, throwback, throwback event uh, for any uh, question the player asks, mm -hmm. and, and still branch from it to all the questions that were in the previous branch. If yes. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's just to you know adjust it so that you look and feel uh, the most natural, right? So the conversation mm -hmm. will flow will flow nicely. You wouldn't feel like this is uh, not very well uh, designed uh, storyline dialogue options etc here are some examples of random events mm -hmm. I'm showing which are we which we are still working on because it's not really designed to to, to use them like that uh, yeah but <laughs> i just realized that uh, we're thinking about creating some some form of uh, spawnable missions, side missions. And I just realized, Camille, like, I don't know, two days ago, that basically random events are, are what we need. Like, really. <laughs> we don't cool. have to create any, any, any new, tool, new tool into this. It's, it's just that. Yeah, that should work. But there is a problem with branching events in the random events, which uh, is a problem. <laughs> Yeah, but you know, we'll fix, fix that, yeah. but we don't have to do anything more, right? We can just adjust what we already have, and we'll have yep. uh, like uh, dynamic mission spawning, right? <laughs> <laughs> if only game dev was as easy as Twine. Yeah, that would be way easier, right? <laughs> that would be way easier. <laughs> okay, but we didn't really explain like what are these translation keys, right? Why these guys didn't oh. just copy it, this this text and put this in this description, right? And and the title. Mm. Well, because I don't think that would be there would be any option to translate this, right? We need to create a new file, a translation file. It's very beautiful as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but thanks to that we can just add new languages very easily and. When you yeah. add something like that, anywhere basically in the game, you know, in this case, in the events, even Blackwell, blah, 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 number, it's the number in the key uh, of these events, it will just load the text from the translation file, right? In this case, English, yeah. right? And when, when you, the player changes the, the language, it will just, you know, pick a different, a different file and load the... Exactly text from that file so we are doing like one thing here so we could have multiple languages later you know it's it's quite a chore i must say that this took me a lot of time and i still made, made mistakes <laughs> i had to go back to this and mm -hmm. and uh, rearrange this or just sometimes i'm i copied you know this uh, the symbols so i could 
I have less of a job later and I just, you know, could change the last numbers. So, like 16, 17, 18. Mm, but I forgot to change the numbers and, <laughs> <laughs> and I had to go back to this later and, and rearrange this. But uh, fortunately, we get uh, a warning in the console, so it's not it's not that bad. As, as the plot thickens, we basically need better tools. So uh, we are going to uh, improve our workflow with that. And we are turning towards uh, the guild all calculation sheets, where we are going to put all the translation tags and the translations themselves for different languages, and then just export it to separate uh, language files. And I think that's all for today's topic. So thank you for staying with us. Thank you, Camille, for joining me today. And thank you for having me here. <laughs> and see you on the next one. Farewell.